Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Spirit of Our Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we just want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. And we just thank God that you're here today. We don't believe it's by chance that you showed up, but we do believe that there is a word from God that's going to bless your life. Listen, I believe today is going to bless your socks off and that God wants to transform and to change things and rearrange things. He wants you to increase more and more. He says you and your children. And so it is the will of God for you and I to increase, to move higher and higher, to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. And so we've been dealing with this word this year, the word of the Lord that's saying that this is a year of acceleration. This is a year of the divine, of the catch up, the divine acceleration of God, where God begins to speed up things. And listen, y'all, I'm telling you, I'm so ready to get into this today. Things that it, that was just dropping in my heart while I was praying this morning. Man, oh man, I'm telling you, I was just in the presence of God and in the glory of God. And I want you to experience that. And God is doing something supernatural. He's doing something miraculous. And even as he began to give that word and he began to show me more and more the speed of that word and what that entails and what that means. And just as I begin to sit and begin to see, just as things begin to move quickly, rapidly, expeditiously, as it begins to move fast, that you have to be ready to receive. You have to be structured to receive. He wants you to be ready to receive the fullness of the force of faith. This thing that he has released in this earth, that he has released in this ministry, that we need all hands on deck. And God is going and touching every household, every member, every partner, every supporter of this work. And God is saying this. I'm telling you, for those that are this is your first time, we want to welcome you as well. But I'm telling you, I'm just coming out the gate with this thing. I'm so ready to dive into this. And so for those that are coming in for the first time, we just want to welcome you with open arms and love in a loving spirit. We thank God for you showing up here today. You can be on many other platforms right now, but you've chosen to lock in and to stay here. I want you to stay tuned. I want you to stay here. Don't go off somewhere else. Uh, -uh Stay here. God had you come here for a reason. And I want you to lock in and to tune in today. So I want to go ahead and have a word of prayer. And I want to go ahead and get started. And I want everybody now, set your watch parties, share the video, share it now, share it, share it now. I'm telling you, let's get ready for God to do something supernatural in our midst today. So, Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And under me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently. Thank you that every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We covered the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. Thank you for sound teaching and doctrine, your word going forth. Thank you for stirring up not just information, but inspiration, which causes transformation in their lives. And so thank you, Father, right now that your grace is sufficient for us. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for withholding things from us that we did deserve and giving us things we didn't deserve. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We give you praise for it today. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for, oh God, I'm just so ready. Oh, I just see it so, so clearly. I'm just so excited about what you are desiring to birth in this earth through your church and that you've allowed us to be a part of that. So, Father, we thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God for transformation and change. Thank you for manifested goodness. Thank you for your manifested presence. Thank you for healing people and delivering them and setting them free for bringing people off of their deathbeds. We thank you for comforting loved ones and for people that have lost loved ones. Thank you for a peace which passes all understanding that it guards their hearts and their minds. We thank you right now for the revealing of it, of information that needs to be revealed to us for whatever we're encountering right now. We thank you, Father, right now for your wisdom, for your knowledge and understanding. 
We thank you, Father, that we are cloaked and clothed in your blessing, clothed in your wisdom, clothed in your glory. We thank you for the spirit of knowledge and understanding and the fear of the Lord and the spirit of might to strengthen us, not only inwardly, but outwardly as well. I call on your name now, Lord Jesus. I declare in decree that this word will come forth with demonstration and with power and authority. I give you glory. I give you glory. Speak through me what you want to speak through me. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my wife and my children. I thank you for this ministry, the privilege and the honor to serve in the kingdom of God. I thank you for a renewed heart for your people, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise that your love dwells in us richly. That we are rooted and grounded in your love. Thank you. Now I call forth every building. I call forth the office spaces, the equipment, the people. I call them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I declare a tsunami of glory hitting this place. Manifestation after manifestation after manifestation. That Father, our heads will swim at your glory. That we can, your goodness will overtake us to such a degree, Father, that we have to fall on our face and give you praise and glory for it. For if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, Father, where would we be? We would have lost our minds, God, if you weren't with us. I thank you, Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Oh, glory. We give you praise. We give you praise. So, Father, I thank you that my assignment will be done for today. Speak expressly through me, Spirit of the living God. Whoo. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for your delivering power. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you for the heathen as an inheritance, that people are coming out of darkness into the marvelous light. I command the scales to come to off the eyes of your people. And Father, I thank you, glory to God, that we exercise and we flex our spiritual authority in this earth. Who glory. Glory, glory, glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whoo, amen. Whoo. Y'all, excuse me. My goodness. My God. Man, I just had a wonderful time in the presence of God, man. When you get in the presence of God, it it is almost like you're taking a shower in his presence. It just feels like anything that's been on you, been you've been dealing with, it just washes you clean, man. You just <laughs> You feel the renewed sense of the of what the blood of Jesus has done, that he's washed and cleansed us from all unrighteousness and that we walking in this authority and victory, man. And this is the victory. The Bible says that overcomes the world, even our faith. Glory to God. Whoo. Hallelujah. Let me get myself together because I got to I got to teach this thing. man. But I'm ex I'm experiencing a sense of power. Can, man, I just feel like I just need to just release stuff. It's stuff that's just welling in my spirit that I feel like I need to just birth out into the earth. I got to just declare it because when you decree a thing, it's released from your spirit into this natural world. I just see it. I just see it. The birthing of a new age, the birthing and the dawning of the church rising up to a degree and the authority, their identity and their authority. No longer are you going to struggle with who you are. I declare it in Jesus' name. I de Man, oh God, I, I feel like, whew, I got to settle myself down. Uh, <laughs> the scripture talks about the spirit of the prophet being subject to the prophet. It's so much running through me that God has given me an assignment to teach his people who they are, to teach them their identity and their authority. And, um, 
Man, I had an encounter um, with my former pastor, and, and, and I began, and I never, I, I, I thank God for his life. I thank God. This is one thing I want to share with y'all. You always honor any voice that is spoken into your life. You got you learn how to honor people. Honor will be the, the catalyst to your promotion. And we were at a funeral and he grabbed me. We were shaking hands and, he, and as we shook hands, he kind of pulled me in. And he talked to me about, he says, I want you, he says, understand your dominion. He says, release your dominion, exercise your dominion. He says, now meditate on that. And it, I mean, when he looked at me, it looked like he was looking right through me. And I said, yes, sir. He didn't even know. I, only, I don't even know if he knew that this was the, that's the assignment upon my life. To walk in that authority, to preach with that power, to exercise that authority. And as I went back and began to meditate, God is revealing to me more and more. And I'm sensing it rise upon me greater. And I believe it was in my heart. It was just laid on my heart. And I kept hearing this word. I need you to begin to teach more doctrine. I was like, oh, OK. To begin to teach my people. They're experiencing my power, but they need to begin to get my word engrafted in them so that they can walk in it. Because they'll try to imitate what they see, but if they don't have the root to how you do what you do then they'll always be looking for it, but never coming to the reality of it. And this is okay. That's good, Lord. That's good. So we're going to go through this word today. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I almost didn't even know what to call this series. You call it the series. I'm just going to preach on it. Who are you? Who are you? We've been dealing with the law of momentum. And God is saying to gain this momentum, you're going to have to have a light. I mean, this is going to have to be, man, your best year from the spirit. I mean, spiritually, physically, financially, it's going to be the best year of your life. I'm declaring it over you now. But he says, I need for them to begin to understand who they are and then how to release this authority in the earth. Now, I've taught on these things at different times, but it ain't going to be like it was before. I'm telling you, I never teach a message the same way. And God is going to bring more out. There's a quote by a man by the name of Smith Wigglesworth that says, it seems as though that God is limited by our prayer life and that he can do nothing for humanity except a man prays. That's a strong statement. Because you got to understand that God created and people say, well, God is sovereign. God is in control. He can do whatever he wants. But you got to understand that in God's sovereignty, he's placed himself uh, under his word and he's obligated to follow his word. He will not violate his word. He set the system up. He says, I place my word above my name. That's a strong statement. That he's held accountable to the words that have come out of him. And we got to understand that he says he's given, he created the earth, the heavens and the earth, but he's given us authority over the works of his hands. And in this earth realm that God needs our involvement and our participation for him to get involved in our situations. But before we even deal with that aspect, you got to understand to release this authority you got to understand your identity because once you understand your identity, you'll easily release your authority. See, when you understand that you're the parent of your child, your child don't run the house. You run the house. You don't allow your children to do things that you as a parent have been called to now oversee and to now teach and to train and to chastise, to correct and to bring correction so that you won't allow. See, a lot of times the reason why parents allow children to rule is, is because they don't realize who they are. And so you got to understand Satan has been kicking some of y'all's tail because you don't realize who you are. And because you don't realize who you are, you don't realize you have the right to declare. You have the right to speak to him. I'm going, boy, I'm, sen whoo, I'm sensing something coming on me. And I'm telling you. And so you first must understand who you are before you can operate in this level of authority that God wants us to walk in. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. Verses 26 through 28. It's going to be a lot of scripture today. 
So go ahead, get ready. Go ahead, get ready. I'm not here to entertain you today. I'm here to train you. Now watch this. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. And it says, and God said, let us make man in our image. Okay, let us, let us, plural, make man in our image after our likeness and let them, man, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. Man has been given dominion over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God, so God declared his, his, his will. He declared this purpose that he created man for. He created us to rule. He created us for his glory, number one, and then it felt to have fellowship with him. But he also gave us purpose. And with this, with him saying this, comes now the blessing or the empowerment to now fulfill what God is saying. And so he says, so God created man in his singular own image. For we have the triune God, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that these three are one. So now, because God is, watch this, the triune God, God, three in one, father, son, Holy Spirit, man is a tripart being three in one. Man is a spirit. He possesses a soul. He lives in a physical body. Three in one. We've been made in God's image and after his likeness. We got to go ahead. Okay, we established that. And watch this. He says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. So this authority is for male and female. Co-creators with God. Now watch this. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, so God blessed them. I'm breaking this down today. He blessed them. To bless means to empower for prosperity and success. For you to be successful and for you, ooh, that's good. And for you also to fulfill your creative purpose, why you were created. So God is saying, I'm blessing you to equip you, to empower you. You gotta understand, he equips you with the gifts and empowers you with the ability to get the job done and what his will is. So if his will is to do these things, is to have dominion. Now he says this, and he blessed them. And he said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion. So this is the fivefold blessing of the purpose of man. God created us to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth, to subdue it, and to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So we have dominion over creation. All right? So now he says this. This is good. And so when he blessed us, but he didn't say we had dominion over one another as individuals, as human beings. He said we have dominion over his creation. We have dominion over the resources. And part of the problem that is taking place is because men have tried to control and dominate the resources in this planet so that they can control and have greater power and authority in this earth. And God is saying, I need you to rise up as to who you are to understand you need your piece of the pie as well. You're supposed to dominate. You just like everybody else has the authority to dominate, you have the authority to dominate. For I blessed you to do these things, this fivefold blessing. You need to dominate. Uh, I, I want you to say this. I want you to type out, I have been created to dominate. I have been created to dominate. Listen, not just this. I've been created to be fruitful, to multiply, that's increase, to replenish the earth. That goes along with birth. That goes along with pregnancies. Listen, you've been created to produce life. So if you've been struggling with infertility, God is saying this, you have a right. It is your promise for your quiver to be full, for you to now birth kings and queens and, and priests in this earth. It is, man, you better understand, you are, your womb, oh man, God, ooh, 
is the transportation center from the spirit to the natural. And so God says this, if something is wrong with it, he needs to now recreate, reformat. He needs to fix what's going on so that now you can birth for those that are crying out in the heavens to come to this planet. Okay, man, you better, Lord Jesus. You are the portal, women. I'm telling you, it is something about it. And any time that you're not able to produce, it is a part of the curse. That is not the blessing. God has already blessed you with all spiritual blessings. So I declare anybody that's desiring children, anybody that's desiring to birth forth, I call forth multiple seeds to come forth. I call forth the birthing of nations to come forth. I command men and women, young children to come forth out of your womb in Jesus name. Whatever got to be restored, I command it to be restored in the name of Jesus. And I need you to say the same thing because I've been blessed by God to replenish this planet. So whenever it, whoo, whenever anybody exits this earth, somebody is coming into this earth and God is using you as a catalyst to birth forth the promise of God in this planet. Okay. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Come on. Oh, my mind going to a whole nother place. Y'all better get ready. You better get doggone ready. Watch this. Watch this. He says, uh, he says, now I want you to subdue it. To subdue means to exert power and authority. It means to subdue means to conquer with force. Or the exertion of superior power. And to bring into permanent subjection. That means he says this, you're supposed to bring this earth into subjection because you are the ones that has been given authority and dominion. <sighs> That means we got to have this mindset. It's my right to dominate in this earth. I've been created to dominate. You got to have this mentality. You've been created for dominion. You've been created for dominion and power and authority. So we're going to get into it, but you've been created for this. I want you to meditate. You need to meditate on that. Even you got to close your eyes right now. Says I've been created to dominate. I've been created. I don't care if your life looks like right now that you're not dominating. You've been created to dominate. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. You got to hear this word over and over again. I've been created to dominate and I dominate in the name of Jesus. I've already been created. God blessed humanity to now subdue, to replenish, to have dominion. I'm telling you to subdue, to have dominion in this earth. Now watch this. I want you to go to the book of uh, Romans 8. Let's go to Romans 8, chapter 14. This is in the Amplified Classic. Romans 8, 14. I may not even get to the authority piece today. I may just deal with the identity part. But it says here, Romans 8, 14 through 19. This is the Amplified Classic. It says it like this. It says, for all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. You know, you, listen, God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. You need to stop walking in fear. You need to come against the fear that's trying to attach itself to your mind to shut you down from walking in your dominion and authority. Come on. He says, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit. Watch this producing sonship in the bliss of, of which we cry, Abba, Father. So remember, Jesus, ne nobody ever called God their father until Jesus showed up on the scene. The Sadducees and the Pharisees got hot with him. It's like, who are you to call God your father? They call him the Lord God. They called him Jehovah, but nobody ever brought this intimate relationship in calling him father. Jesus introduces that and he says this to as many as received him. And now that's going to go into, I'm getting ready. That's in first John one and 12. But it says, as many as received them, to, to them gave he power or authority, right and privilege to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. But now going back to Romans, he says this. He says, now watch this, this spirit producing sonship. So you have received the spirit of adoption. You've been adopted into the family of God when you make Jesus the Lord of your life. You've been adopted. You've been adopted. Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. 
Jesus is the only begotten of God because now God impregnated a woman by the name of Mary, who was a virgin who had never been touched by a man. And so now watch this. Jesus, he was the only one that had God's blood type because a child gets his DNA from the father. And so Jesus, watch this, was the firstborn, but watch this, once he died, was raised from the dead, and we accepted him as Lord and Savior. Now the Bible says we receive the spirit of adoption, which now we can cry, Abba, Father. We can now call God our Father through what Jesus did, okay? Many of y'all, I know you understand that already. Now watch this. The spirit, verse 16, the spirit himself, testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. There are many people who have struggled with their salvation. You have to see the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your born again human spirit to let you know that you are a child of God. It is not based off of outward things that are taking place. It's based on an inward reality that is taking place. When you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, watch this, you are born again. You know, you believe that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, that he died and that God raised him from the dead for our justification. In other words, making us right with God. He says, you shall be saved. That's what it's for. By grace are we saved through faith in Ephesians 2 and 8, which is not based off of what we did. It's based off what Jesus did. So watch this. It's your faith in what Jesus has done that has caused you to be born again, not your acts. No, I got under, I got because some of you feel like when you mess up that you ain't saved no more. So every time somebody gives a salvation call, you keep praying, hoping that it sticks this time. And because you keep doing that, some sometimes you're doing it's OK to go if you want to repeat after people. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if you're doing it because let me do it just to make sure. Let me do it just in case. That means you're not solid in your salvation. You got to be solid in the fact that I'm already saved and me committing a sin does not unravel my salvation. You got to believe that. See, part of your identity is you understanding that you're born again, that you are a child of God. And see, some of you, Satan has stagnated you and stopped you in your tracks because of something you did years ago or something that you're currently doing. And he's now messing you up because sin won't unravel your salvation, but it will mess up your life. And so now it causes you for your confidence to go down. And because you don't have confidence that's that the salvation took and that it, watch this. And because you got to understand that it is everlasting. Satan cannot. You know, some people are like, well, it's the whole thing against the doctrine of once saved, always saved. I'm not going to get into that right now today. But I'm telling you this. If you born again, the Bible clearly says if you confess Jesus with your mouth, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Now, after that, we have to renew our minds to live a certain way because we are the righteousness of God, not to become the righteousness of God, but because we've already been transformed into a son or daughter of God and we've been declared righteous. We need to learn what righteous people do and how righteous people live. But you watch, I'm, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I know this. This See, people who are legalists, who go by the works of the law, can't stand this message of God's grace. Because now what it does is it means you can't qualify through your effort to be right with God. You'll, watch this. The only qualification for you to be right with God is for you to confess Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Now watch this. But now he doesn't want you living a sinful life. You need to awaken to who you are. The Bible says awaken unto righteousness and sin not. And the way you the way you stop sinning is to not make yourself stop sinning is to make yourself realize who you are in Christ. And it'll cause you to stop sinning. It'll cause you to say, because I'm righteous, I don't do this anymore. And so we got to preach his righteousness. In other words, your identity which now will affect your walk in life. Remember vision, language, and effort. See, in the vision, when you see who you are, you will speak who you are and you will live like who you are. See, it all ties in together. It all ties in together. I want you to declare this. I am the righteousness of God. 
I am the righteousness of God. Type it out. Somebody help me out. I need some interaction. I can't see y'all right now, but listen, I, I need to set it up. But listen, I am the righteousness of God. See, if I can get this in you, I ain't got to worry about what you're doing because your righteousness will become such a reality. I need to work on your vision of yourself, your identity of yourself. Then all the other stuff will start lining up. You got to start realizing that I'm a king and a priest. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me let me stay. Let me stay the course. I only got a little time here. Now, let's stick. Let's stick with this word. I want to sow this into you. Now, I'm going to have little pockets and moments where I begin to expound more and more. But I need for you to get this word in you. But we're still in Romans eight. Now we're in verse 16. I'll read verse 16 again. It says the spirit himself does testify together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. Watch this. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs. Also, heirs of God and fellow heirs or the King James says joint heirs with Jesus Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Then it says only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. People want the glory. But they don't want the suffering that comes with being a Christian. They don't want the, the people talking against you. They don't want the um, um, the persecutions that come with being born again and going against the grain of society and how we're to live, how we're to conduct ourselves. So some people can't handle the pressure of the suffering, but they want all the glory. Now, see, now you got to understand this, that when you're born again, that you're an heir of God, you're an heir. Think about an heiress or an heir, a man or a woman who's an heir or somebody who is wealthy. They have all the rights. They have all access to the same wealth, the same privileges as their parents are. I'm telling you, you're an heir of God. I'm an heir of God. But watch this. We're joint heirs with Jesus. Joint heir. You're a joint heir. You're a joint heir. That means you have all equal rights and privileges as Jesus himself. You have all rights and privileges as Jesus himself. You're a part of the body of Christ. That's why. Because now you're a part of the body. Jesus being the head, we being the body. My head, listen, my body is not separated from my head. It's all one. So whatever my head got, my body got. Whatever Jesus has, you and I have. Whatever Jesus has, you and I have. We're heirs. We are heirs of God. Join heirs with Jesus. Oh, I, I need to take you somewhere. Oh, in, in, in Galatians 4, I think it is. It talks about, is it 5? It talks about, oh, let, let, me, let me see. Uh, I'm going to come back here. I got I to make this quick pit stop. I got to make this quick pit stop. Come on, Holy Ghost teachers. So this thing ain't good. So this thing ain't good in our hearts and in our minds. In Galatians, I think it's four. Yeah, it says, now I say, in verse one, it says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. And so now it, it goes on, it's dealing with the law and it's dealing with grace and talking about we're no longer under the law, but we're under grace, but we receive. Now it says in verse six, though, it says, what verse two, verse five, um, to redeem them in the fullness of time. In verse four, it talks about in the fullness of time was God come sent forth in his son or he sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them, which were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out the father. But now the thing I want you, um, he says, then in verse seven, Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. You're no longer a servant, but a son. Now, you're a son who can serve. But watch this. You're just no less. See, you keep calling yourself a servant of God, but you need to be more mindful of the fact that you are a son of God. You're a daughter of God. That means you have all equal rights and privileges. If you go into a household and they have servants, the children don't, aren't on the same level as the servants. The children help run the house. The servants are subject to the children just like they are to the parents. And so you got to understand that you, your classification has been changed from a servant to a son. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. I need you to type that. I need you to say that. I am a son. For men, you are a son of God. Women, you are a daughter of God. So that means you have all equal rights and privileges as the Lord Jesus himself. So whatever Jesus has, you have. But then in verse 1, 
I want to go back to that. He says, as long as you are a child, you don't differ from a servant. So as long as you walk in like a child, Paul said like this. He says, listen, I, I used to walk as this child, but then I put away childish things. And he went on talking about even walking in love. As you grow and mature in the way that God tells us to live, you go from childhood to now adulthood and you begin to now master who you are so that now God can trust you. So even from a child who's an heir, until they get to a certain point, that money is laid up in a trust. Uh, and usually there are stipulations that until this child turns 18, 21, 20, whatever it is that's been established. He says this, you can't access what you already have a right to. It's already laid up for you. You just don't have access to it yet. But we've been granted access. But watch this. We won't fully see our full inheritance until we grow up. There are some things God wants to give you, but you ain't ready for it yet. And he's saying, I need you to develop in your identity, developing your character, developing how you function so that I can now release all the blessings in spiritual places that I've given you so that now they can begin to manifest. And so you are praying for something that your character hasn't caught up with yet. And so God is saying, I need for your character to catch up to the degree of what you pray and believe in and seeing. You see, God has given you the vision. But now it hasn't been time for you to walk into it just yet. See, David was anointed king, but he went back to tend to the sheep until it was the time appointed for him to walk in his kingship. He, even though he was anointed, it didn't mean, even though he was dressed for the title, it wasn't time for him yet. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm telling you, God, and see, that's what's confusing some people. You thinking that you have a right to walk in something that you haven't matured to yet. He says, if you're faithful over the little, then I'll make you rule over much. So now you got to understand this. I need to recognize, okay, I'm a, I'm a child of God. I'm, a, I'm an heir of God, join heirs with Jesus. And so now I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. But now I need to grow in this stuff. This is why God had us walking in the fruit of the spirit. This is why he keeps teaching us this stuff so we can develop to handle it. So you can make wise choices and decisions for you to be a leader. You got to know how first to lead yourself. And God is saying this, I need for you to begin to walk in this thing. And to grow in this thing. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I got about 10 minutes or so. Now watch this. He says this. Uh, where am I? Verse 18. I'm going back to Romans 8. So back in Romans 8, um, the fellow heirs with Christ. Yeah, I'm going to go to verse 18 now. It says, but what of that? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this present life are not worth to being compared with the glory that's about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred on us. For even the whole creation, all nature awaits expectantly. All of creation, all of nature is longing earnestly for God's sons to be made known and waits for the revealing and the disclosing of their sonship. That's part of our vision statement for the world. I mean, manifesting the sons of God as we teach you your authority, rights and privileges so that all of creation can begin to now rejoice in the fact that, hey, the sons and daughters of God are rising up and manifesting themselves in the earth. See, creation is groaning because we haven't shown up yet. The earth is in pain because we haven't taken authority and now begin to rule and reign in this life through and by Christ Jesus. I, I don't want to preach above your heads. Let me, let me, let me. OK, I, I want to bring it down to bring it up. In other words, you're supposed to be the captains of industry. The reason why the earth's resources are being used the way they are is because they, in many cases, they are being controlled by wicked men and women who have now risen through the ranks in this earth through whatever it is, even, ah, let me, oh Lord. <sighs> okay, Mike, go ahead, release it. Just, 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 I, I'll make it right if I need to re-correct it. Because men and women have subjugated themselves to the God, little G of this world, who has authority in this planet to now give power to whom he wants to give power to. But watch this, because remember, when Jesus went into the wilderness, one of the temptations was he took Jesus to the pinnacle, showed him all the kingdoms of the earth and says, if you bow down to me, I'll give you everything your eye sees. He could not do that if he didn't have the authority or the right to do it. The reason why he could do it is because Adam gave it over to him in the garden. Jesus came to get it back, but he wasn't supposed to get it back that way. 
He says now, because until Satan's lease is up, there are certain things he can maneuver in this earth's realm, but we've been given power and authority over Satan to now go in and infiltrate. That's why he said subdue, go in with force. The kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent taketh by force. We have authority. God, when as I was meditating on this, God brought this back up to me, man by the name of Lester Summerall, great man of God, who's going on home to be with the Lord. He was dealing with this bank one time that they, they were dealing treacherously and wrongly to him, treating him wrong, not doing right. This man walked out of a meeting out of that bank, looked at the bank, spoke to it and cursed the bank because they didn't do right. I think within a day or two, that bank shut down. Now, this was a man known for walking in great authority and power. This dude had enough wherewithal and knowledge to say, because you are dealing treacherously with me, and with the, by now, you got to understand, he was a level of maturity to walk in that level of power. You don't just use it because you get mad with somebody and now you just want to curse somebody and you want to speak negative and hope that they die, that children die, everybody die. No, 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 no. But he began to deal with because of that. There were people even with, um, uh, I think it was a, a pastor in Alabama, maybe that they, they had um, put this billboard over a strip club and he, um, he put a particular scripture up there. And I think based off of their advertisement and what they were doing and praying, that strip club that was right there shut down. That's the authority where we speak. See, uh, I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to tell you how much power you have. That, that you got power. Even as I was praying this morning, I began to curse the finances of industries, of the pornography industry, of people who are now creating content that's destroying people's lives. I said, listen, if all of us rose up and declared who we were and spoke with the power and authority that we have, what will begin to happen in this planet? Do you realize who you are? That's why we're teaching this. You got to understand this authority. Yeah, you, God gave us power to become sons of God, but this earth is in creation. This is groaning. It's groaning. Creation is groaning. And, and listen, people don't even know why the earth is groaning the way that it is. Groaning through earthquakes, groaning through tsunamis, groaning through things that are taking place. That we as the children of God, the body of Christ, have been designed by God to go forth in every sphere of influence and begin to control, to make legislations and laws, to begin to promote, to begin to build, to begin to dominate. Oh, Lord Jesus. The, the book of Revelation chapter one. Let me go there. Verses four through six. That's what I said. All I'm dealing with today is identity right now. I, I've slipped into the authority, but I want to. I got to talk to you about this identity. This is who you are. It says verses uh, four through six, Revelation one, four through six. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you in peace from um, from him, which is, which was, which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before, before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. That's important. He's the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us. This is talking about you and I kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now, let's go to Revelation five, nine through twelve. Revelation chapter five, verses nine through twelve. And it says here, and they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests. We've been made unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about and the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, and glory, man, and blessing. I'm telling you, he was designed to see power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, 
glory, blessing, sevenfold manifestation. I don't have time to go into this. I taught some of this on the message talking about the best of both worlds. Citizens of heaven ruling here on the earth. Now, I'm going to get into that a little bit as I go through this series. And first down, now watch this. You got to understand this. You and I have been created as kings and priests. Kings are one whose position is hereditary and who rules for life. See, your position is hereditary. How did you inherit this kingship? Through faith in Christ. Through because of faith in Christ, you've been made. We've been made. You and I have been made kings and priests. Now, kings and priests are rulers in touch with him. See, priest deals with the spiritual. King deals with political. In other words, rulers from heaven, that are rulers on earth that's in touch with God in heaven, who understand and gets their assignment from heaven to execute it here on the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You and I are the kings of the kingdom of God to execute and kings legislate. I'm not going to get that just yet through the words of their mouth. I'll come back to that in just a second. But you got to realize that you and I are kings and priests. We got to deal with that more. We got to deal with that more. You are a king. You rule for life and you hold a preeminent position. In other words, you are chief amongst your competitors. Whatever God has called you to do, you're supposed to be the best at what you do. You are the best at what you do, for you are a king and then you are a priest. A priest is a person set apart for special religious duties, acting as mediators between God and man and to function relating to worship. <laughs> he called us ministers of reconciliation. In other words, our job is to reconcile mankind back to God. So as our job, not just through the preaching of the word, but through the demonstration of his power, the demonstration of his authority. I, I need you to stay with me. You got to stay with me. I don't want to overload you. Do I need to stop now? I, I, need, I need you to get this. I need you to get this. The reason why the enemy has been running over you mentally, physically, Financially, it's because you haven't risen up in your authority. Your kingship. Uh-uh. I'm, I'm not going to lose my inheritance because of mismanagement. I refuse to do that any longer. I refuse to mismanage this house. I refuse to mismanage my mind. I refuse to mismanage my finances. I refuse to mismanage my health and well-being, this physical body, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm a king and a priest, and kings declare... And when kings declare or decree, it is established within the kingdom. The king has said this. And now I'm telling you, everything got to line up. But you got to understand who you are. You are when you understand that you're a king and a priest, you carry yourself different. You carry yourself different. You think about yourself different. Kings don't be concerned with menial things. Kings are seated. So you seated above all principality and power. You're seated together with Christ in heavenly places. So stuff that's beneath you, that's beneath me. That's surface dweller stuff. That's surface dweller stuff. See, y'all y'all bickering and fighting about stuff. That's surface dweller stuff. I'm a king and I'm a priest. I'm seated up here. That don't bother me. I rise above Christian turbulence. Glory to God. I, I rise above that. Y'all, y'all fussing and fighting with each other. Look at that foolishness. You, you walking like surface dwellers. You walking like people without a covenant. You walking like mere men and women. You're not walking as supernatural. God's nature is in you. And how can you cuss out somebody when God's nature is in you? Well, how can you now act nasty towards someone when the spirit of grace abides in you? That same grace and that same mercy that was displayed to you. You can't display it to somebody else. And God is saying, I need you to come out of being a carnal Christian and rise up in your authority and power. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's beneath me. Oh, that sounds arrogant. You call it what you want to. It, it, that's who I am. Just because you don't know who you are, don't try to bring me down to your level. Oh, shoot. Yes, I'm coming. I'm coming with both guns blazing. It's time out for the foolishness. 
You looking for gossip to hear so that you can now spread it. That's immaturity. Get rid of it. That's why God can't trust you on a new level because you talk too much and you never shut up. I said you talk too much <laughs> and you never. I'm telling you, that's why he can't trust you with certain things. You ain't got your tongue under control yet. You're revealing too many secrets. That's why he can't tell you his secrets. Yeah, you want more. But he said, if you can't handle this stuff. Oh, man, you can't handle the true riches. He told us he wants us to be good stewards over the mysteries of God. It's time. It's time. I'm, I'm, I'm out of time. Uh, I can. Oh, man, I want to give you how much. Can y'all give me five minutes, five moments, just five. Can I get five? Can I get five on it? Can I, let me get five on it. Let me get five. Just five. Just five. Just five. He says, watch this. Go to um, in, in 2 Corinthians 5. This is the amplified version. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 through 21. 17 through 21. Just, just, I'm going to read it real quick. <laughs> it says, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself. He restored the world to favor with himself. He restored and reconciled the world. Jesus, the savior of the world, not just of you, but the world. So the person that you think just as vile, just as decrepit and depraved and, and just, as, just as disgusting, Jesus died for them. And reconcile their sins just like you. All they have to do is believe it. And a transformation will take place. I know sometimes it's hard for some of y'all to accept because you're so works based in your mind. And I get it. Somebody that now uh, rapes a little baby, a child, that's, that's a disgusting and vile thing. That ain't nothing but demonic. But that same person can be delivered from those demons. Think about, see, we read these scriptures about the madman of Gadara who was now consumed with the legion of demons. Just imagine all of this going on in him. That Jesus shows up and they run in fear and terror. But that man deserved, Jesus wanted to set him free just like he set everybody else free. I know. You thinking about somebody you can't stand and you just want God to shoot them down and you want everything the bad to happen to them because they talked about you behind your back. You don't you know God's love and grace is shining upon you and shining upon them. His grace is shines upon the just and the unjust. And I'm talking about people who born again, spirit filled and still acting childish. He says this. Our job is to reconcile the world to himself. So we uh, then he says this reconciling the world to favor with himself, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them. And listen, y'all, Jesus ain't holding nothing against you. Jesus, the scripture is clearly saying it. He ain't holding the sin against you. He canceled the sin, the judgment attached to the sin. Jesus canceled it. And that's our message to the world. Jesus died for your sins. He already paid for your sins. He already canceled your sin. You need to believe it now. No, no, we, we got to have this thing where we have, a, I mean, a salvation blitz where we now are ministers of reconciliation, telling the world this message. I know it'll mess with your religious mind. Jesus died for the sins of the world. This is where some people have got off in some messages. So they're just thinking that people don't need to get saved, that they're already saved. But no, the Bible clearly teaches you still got to acknowledge Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God. 
that that now that that thing had, that's been applied, it takes root now. And now your spirit becomes alive under God. And now you have access to all this stuff. I'm telling you, y'all, this is such a powerful message. And so he's committed to us the message of reconciliation or restoration of favor. So we are Jesus Christ's ambassadors. God making his appeal as it were through us. We as Christ's personal representatives beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor. Now offer it to you and be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made Christ virtually to be sin who knew no sin so that in and through him we might become we might become endued with, viewed as, being in, and examples of the righteousness of God, what we ought to be approved and acceptable and right in relationship with him. Watch this, by his goodness. It's by his goodness that he did this. Y'all, y'all need to meditate on that. I don't want to go back over it anymore right now, but just the fact that Jesus became sin and he himself didn't sin. So that we through him might become endued with and viewed as being in and examples of the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God. You need to declare that your identity. That's your identity. I'm righteous. I'm in right standing with God. I am righteous. Say this. Say, I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus, I am right with God. I am right with God. I am right with God. Even when I mess up in sin, I'm right with God. See, that's how you come out of the sin is by you declaring I'm right with God. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm above this temptation because the temptation always comes with a way of escape. He never allows me to be tempted above my ability to handle the temptation, but always makes a way of escape. So just the fact that it, that thing is coming against you already shows you you can handle it, you can overcome it, and there's a way out of it. Watch this. I am the righteousness of God, and I'm an ambassador for Christ. And an ambassador is a diplomatic agent of the highest rank and degree, accredited to a foreign government or sovereign as the resident representative of his or her own government, appointed sovereignly for special and oft often temporary Diplomatic assignment. In other words, an authorized representative, a messenger going to another place on a temporary assignment. We are citizens of heaven living here on this earth on a temporary assignment. And now we're Christ's representatives. We're heaven's representatives. I'm an ambassador for Christ. So when I come in his name and you come against me, you coming against he who has sent me. That's a boldness that takes place that see you don't see you don't care when all of the trolls come out. The cancel culture, they can't cancel you. Can't nobody cancel you with God's assignment on your life. I dare they think that, that they man, that they can control God's assignment. Man, just because this group saying that you ain't this, I don't care. It ain't going to stop God's assignment because you've been blessed by God and can't nobody curse whom God has blessed. Listen, if only watch this, what it's going to do is it'll, it's going to cause your ministry, your life, your business to gain traction and growth. Whenever it's going to be free advertisement. They talked about Jesus. They're going to talk about you. And you ain't got to apologize for folk for stuff that you do led by the spirit of God. You ain't got to do all of that stuff. I'm telling you, you rising up and this time. Well, listen, they talked about Jesus. They're going to talk about you and whoever God is assigned to your life. They're going to come and the ones that ain't supposed to be there, they're going to go. And I'm telling you, you need to rise up strong. You need to be confident in who you are. I don't care because you've outgrown your friends. God will give you a new circle of friends. To help push you. Don't you let them and your need and your craving for fellowship stop you from moving forward as to who you are. And now you quiet yourself down because you've been fed on another level. And now you grow into another level and they 
trying to latch on to you to keep you down because they said, no, don't leave me. Don't leave me. But he says, listen, you ain't got to, I ain't got to leave you. You can come with me. You can come up hither with me. We can both grow in this thing. But if you ain't willing to grow, I'm growing on. See, it ain't the fact that you now just telling people I ain't going to spend no time with you. They'll start detaching themselves because of the glory on your life will cause conviction in theirs. And they'll see now all of a sudden, oh, you think you better than this. You doing this and you doing that. Trying to make you dumb down who you are. And I rebuke that in Jesus name. And you come out of that thing and you rise up in your authority and recognize who you are. See, God raised me up a certain way. I know how to function in any environment. You, you ain't going to force me to, to do nothing. You ain't, I'm sorry, I, I'm just built that way. I, I'm, I'm a leader. God created me this way. I had friends, man, come on, do this, do that. No, you can talk about me, make cracks, make jokes, but I'm the righteousness of God. You better hear me. You better hear me. Man, shoot. I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. I know. I, I've been preaching to y'all. Let me shut up, man. Let me go. Lord Jesus. You righteous thing, you. You're the righteousness of God. You are king and a priest. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. Yeah, you say that about you. I know I done preached it to you, but you say it about you. You're going to get into this thing. You are, ooh, let me just say this. As a son and daughter, as a king and a priest, as an ambassador, a citizen of heaven, God says this, I need you to understand your citizenship. And he says, because you're, because you're the righteousness of God, because you're a king and a priest, because you're a citizen of heaven, you are an authorized dealer of the power of God. You're an authorized dealer. You're an authorized dealer. You got to hear me. There are certain people that can't do business unless they're authorized to do so by the parent company. You are franchised for God. He says you're an authorized dealer of the power of God. You're an authorized dealer. So God wants you authorized to now you have been authorized and deputized to go into the earth and represent God. But he trains us how to walk in this power and authority. And that's what we're going to deal with next week. How to now take who you are as a representative and begin to now display and demonstrate this authority so that when people come across your path, you're going to be confident. You need to be confident in demonstrating this power and authority. So when somebody come and ask for you to pray for them, you ain't timid. You already prepared yourself because these signs follow them that believe. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So you need, be, you need to get ready. It's time to begin to cast out devils and demons. You're going to recognize and identify because the gifts of the spirit, the, the discerning of spirits will operate. And you'll begin to see things supernaturally so that now you can address it as God's authority that's on the scene in that moment. You better get ready because God going to expose you to some things and you you about to encounter some supernatural acts in your life. So get ready, church. The time of demonstration is at hand. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We give you glory, power, glory and honor and authority, dominion and power forevermore. We thank you, Father. We praise you now for your goodness, for your grace and for your mercy. Now, for anybody that's under the sound of my voice, I pray right now that you will bring conviction, knowledge and understanding to let them know that there is a literal heaven to gain. Literal heaven to gain and a hell to shine. Father, we thank you now. Speak expressly to their hearts to let them know that you are the Lord of all, that you sent your son to die for their sins and that you raise them up for their justification. And so we give you praise, glory and honor for it in Jesus name. Amen. Now, listen, there may be somebody out there today. You never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you want to today. I want you to simply make this confession of your faith. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ. The son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. 
Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I'm born again in Jesus name. Amen. Well, y'all, if you prayed that prayer, you are born again. You are a citizen of heaven. But now also there's a promise of the father called the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, where God's power comes to fill your life. And the person of the Holy Spirit comes to live and dwell in you to be a comforter, <clears throat> to be a counselor to you, to be a guide to you, to assist you and to help you in life. I want you to pray this prayer to receive them right now. That's your heart's desire. I want you to say this, say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I receive you in your fullness. Give me the utterance to speak in other tongues. Help me to transform and to change me into the image of Christ. In Jesus name. Amen. Yeah, he's there. He abides in you. Now, what you can do now is open up your mouth, begin to add voice, begin to speak. You don't have to say anything in English. Not hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's all good things to say. But he's going to give you an utterance. He's going to help you with words. It'll sound weird to your head. But as you begin to open up your mouth, refresekanokore bate seken. La ramande sheko ramasata robo setekene. Lilo bo shata rabasata. Watch that. That's, see, that's a heavenly language coming out. The Bible says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yeah. Begin to thank him. For some of you, wherever you are, lift up your hands as you receive the Holy Spirit to now come on the inside of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. Listen, you can do that every day. You can do that in your own ability, just like I'm talking in the natural and in, in, in understanding a language you can understand. I can go into an unknown tongue, a language I don't understand. But the Holy Spirit is assisting me and giving me the articulation and the words to say. So just like I'm talking to you now in my own will, the Holy Spirit is not making me do it. He's assisting me and helping me to do it. I can go and pray like this. Everybody's language is different. Some start off fluent. Some start off, bah, 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 da, 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 no, no, da, bah, bah. If that's how you start, praise God. And the more you do it, the more fluent it becomes. So I don't want you to be discouraged. I want you to say every day, Father, I thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit. And I have the ability to speak with other tongues as he gives me the utterance. Now, Holy Spirit, you talk to him. Holy Spirit, help me to pray. And just every day practice. Begin to speak, begin to pray. He's going to assist. And I promise you, one day, if it's not immediate, it eventually will happen. A fluency will come and take place. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Also, at this time, there may be somebody you don't have a church home. This is it's important for every person to have a pastor in their lives to oversee. The pastor's job is an under shepherd. Jesus being the chief shepherd over the body of Christ. But he's appointed men and women to be shepherds over the flock of God, over his people in the earth. And so it's important for them to train and to teach you the word of God, to disciple you, to help you grow in the things of God. And so, listen, let us do that. Let us be a part of that process for your life to help to train, to develop and to grow you in the things of God. If you don't have a church home and you believe God is leading, guiding and directing you to join this local fellowship. This is not only local, but this is our e-church as well. Our global fellowship. Listen, you could be an e-church member. You can be in another state, another country. And so we are growing in our development of our e-church and helping you to grow and to increase. And we will have content available for you, for you to develop as to who you are in Christ. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited for you that we want a global army that's going forth to do great exploits in the earth. Come on, join today. Connect today. If that's your desire and you want to find out maybe some more information, you can email us at info at spiritoffire.us, info at spiritoffire.us, or you can send us a message on our social media platforms. Let us know, hey, I want to connect. And we'll have someone reach out to you for that. Well, praise God. At this time, we want to honor God in our giving. That We believe that giving, or we call it opportunity for prosperity, glory to God, an opportunity for us to increase and to grow. Giving is the catalyst that starts the process of your prosperity. Now, it's not the only thing, but it starts it.
And it helps now bring that power, that empowerment, that blessing upon your life. And that now all of a sudden God will give you witty inventions, ideas, concepts, ways to format and to form multiple streams of income to funnel his increase to your life. The financial increase of God in your life. Not only will it affect you financially, but it affects you in other areas of your life where favor is concerned, where even sometimes healing is concerned, deliverance and wholeness. Listen, a seed can meet any need and every need as God gives direction. Even the man of God went to the widow woman's house. Elijah went to this widow woman's house. To, and God said, I spoke to this woman to sustain you. And so not only now she said this, I only have a little cake and meal, uh, oil and meal for me and my son. We're going to eat it and die. The prophet said, before you do it, give me some, make me a cake and then you can eat. The Bible says that now her oil, the vats begin to overflow and everything begin to produce. And her and her son had enough to eat for an entire year. Not only that, the son died. And because the man of God was there, that son was brought back to life because of even the initial seed that she planted into that man's life. And so I'm telling you, as God is, uh, is calling you to sow today and to give, expect harvest in your life. Expect the supernatural power of God. And we're in agreement with you for things to transform and things to change and things to grow and to increase. So now on the screen is information as to different methods and ways you can give. And as you give, we believe with you that God will bring it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over that he'll cause men to give unto your bosom. And so we thank God for your continued financial support of this ministry and of this work. And we thank you for it. And so even those that may be given by cash app, we not only ask if you just put your name, but also your email address in there if you can, so that we can give you a proper um, record of your giving um, as you sow and as you give. So we just thank you for that. All right, y'all. I declare, I declare breakthrough financially. I declare favor. I declare increase in your life in Jesus name. Amen. All right, y'all. I know I went a little over time than normal, but I pray that what was shared was a blessing to you, that it is helping to develop you. I want you to develop in the image of yourself, the image of God in you, who you are in Christ. And so that now you can begin to function in everything that God has called you to do. Praise God. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, certainly not out of message. And so we here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship, where we are changing a culture, igniting a passion and living a dream. So on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we say we love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. See you next time. Peace.